on my small interview project today, I'll be talking to Ian Higginbottom from Reflecting Power. Uh, thanks for joining me today, Ian. Um, okay. Would you like to tell me about Reflecting Power? Yeah, what I do. Yeah. Yeah, look, I work with, essentially with small businesses or with business teams, and I work in the area of what I'd call productivity coaching. Okay. Now that really means I work with business, I enable them to find what we might call hidden areas of waste, right. wasted time, wasted effort, okay. wasted like a steal your profits. Sure, sure. And I do that by training uh, business leaders and teams in some really critical areas of communication and self mastery. Okay, so you're focusing more on individuals or on teams? Okay, so I've got two parts. That's, yep. the, that's basically around the team part. Yep. And then working with individuals, I work as like what you call a personal coach or an individual coach. Sure. Uh, where I'm really then working with people around that, getting past their roadblocks, frustrations, fears, okay. those things that kind of get in the way that come up in both business and in life. But okay. certainly my experience of business in the past been uh, there's a few of those come up along the way. And sure, <laughs> that absolutely. Critical absolutely. Of it, and so business. what's what's like an ideal sort of client for you? Like who, who would you work with as the perfect client? Perfect client would be, it would be a business that is really about the, the sort of triple bottom line. Someone yep. who really wants to make a successful business, financially yep. going for it, but wants to create a place that's a really great place to work, yep. where you know people experience meaning and satisfaction in their work, and it's doing something really valuable that's contributing to the world. That would okay. be my ideal. Okay, excellent, excellent. Um, why did you go into business, uh, Ian? Uh, <laughs> There's a whole lot about business yeah, I like. Absolutely. The autonomy, the responsibility, some freedom, the contribution, this idea of doing something that no one else is doing. Yeah. I like all those bits. And there's also something about business about like business is created in language. You sure. know, like we just declare it into existence. Yep. And then we make offers and then end up you know, making promises and then if you deliver on the promises the business goes You're it's kind of like magic yeah, except yeah. it's not as easy as just waving a wand okay. <laughs> you've got some hard work to do yeah definitely, definitely. but but it's this magic thing we build it from nothing yeah and, and how, how long have you been, been in business i've been in business for 18 years okay um, not this business yep. I, I build a software business right. with some colleagues from yep. scratch like the startup with three of us and that peaked at about 50 staff Okay. And then we had, we had some hiccups, and but that is, or there's two businesses still running in Hobart, yeah. employing 26 people, which okay. was really nice. And then I've stepped out of that to bring the experience of what I think of as the personal growth path through right. building a business, and now being able to go. Well, I want to enable other people Help to be coach successful other people into that whole personal business. growth space. Yeah, yeah. and okay. in the business context, yeah. because I want yeah. businesses to succeed, and I think businesses usually mostly don't fail because of external circumstances. Yep. They're there, like yeah, the economy yeah. goes bang or the government changes. Yep. But if people then, how they respond to that change sure. is the big thing I want to work with. Yeah. And how do they shift themselves okay. to deal with what's going on in the world and around them yep. and, and, and take that responsibility rather than going, well, the economy went bad and the business went broke and it's all So more fault. looking at an internal sort of approach rather than focusing on the external forces and everything like that? That's, that's right. That's yeah. we're so people who are willing to come from personal responsibility yeah. about what's okay. going on. Even, sure, things do happen in the world. Yeah, but it's how you respond to those situations. To yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Um, if you had your time over again, Ian, um, would you change anything? Oh, that one. <laughs> Actually, no, because I kind of like where I am. Yeah. And I, look, I've made mistakes along the way, like sure. a few of us, and, uh, and had some real ups and downs on it all. But, but I end up in a pretty good position. I love the businesses I've built. I love what I'm doing now. Um, sure, I'd look back and go, I, I do things differently, I'd yep. get more coaching, I'd get some other sure. things along yep. the way, yep. but not really, I'd still okay. take the same path. So you're pretty happy with the whole sort of approach you've taken to where you are now? Yeah, really. Yeah. Well, the, uh, particularly at the moment, I feel like I've gone and trained and developed myself in this area of coaching and team development, is, which is the training I wish I'd got or would have liked to have had back when I back was when starting my it. business. Yeah. That's so I think that I may have benefited the other businesses you actually have got now? Sure, yeah. So I went yeah. back and looked for the training I would have liked to have had sure. so sure. that I can now provide it to others. It's good the power of uh, hindsight and yeah. reflection to actually look back, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. Um, what's been your biggest challenge in business, Ian? In the current business? Current business, yeah. Current, current business, business, it's... 
I've got two really. Yep. One is I'm building a new business in a new city with yep. no networks, and Canberra's a highly networked city. Awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> so interesting challenge. Yep, yep. And the other one is this whole area of wanting to build productivity through this communication and self mastery space right. is getting that across. Okay. I know I've got something really valuable. I've seen it work several lots of times. Yep. Um, but it's not so obvious to go, oh yeah, do X, Y, Z, you'll get sure. this. So getting that across to people okay. of where the value is. All right. Well, maybe you could give some advice to people on um, that whole space of you know, new city, new business, yeah. starting from fresh. How, how do you get yourself out there as far as networking and building your, your personal brand and your business brand? Yeah. Well, what I've done, I've spent the last six months really just networking. Yep. Just meeting people in the space, meeting people in coaching, meeting yep. people in business, trying to understand the lay of Yep. what's going on in Canberra in that okay. space and then also get a feel for which is a bit I really want to tackle. Okay, so is that just getting your, your name out there or are you targeting sort of people to, to build that network with or like what, what type uh, of networking are you talking about? I'm doing a combination. I've started building some collaborations in the coaching and the yep. business space and what I'm developing. Sure. I'm out meeting potential clients and going to the things they go yep. to and where they might be yep. and I've got some clients out of okay. doing that. Yep. And there's a, there's a middle area which I'll come back to. <laughs> okay, alright, no problem. Um, and, and how do you focus working like new business? How do you focus working on the business versus in the business? But in a way, the minute it's a new business, there's a lot of working on it. Yep. Uh, so I'm designing it, marketing it, yep. developing the, the, the little flavour, what's going to work here in Canberra at this time. Sure. Uh, and I've got enough to do that I am working in it as well. Okay. Um, I reckon. By the end of this year, that balance will have changed a lot. I, yep. I can see there's a lot of work starting to flow. The seeds I've planted yep. after the yep. last six months are flowering. Okay, so based based on your past business, based on your past business experience and the you know, obviously 18 years or so in, in business, um, how do you place a process around working on versus in then? Yeah, I try to take time out for working on the business. Okay, so, so you plan for that or? Reflection. Early in the business, I didn't. I yeah. was just totally in it. But yep. as I've, I don't know if mature, it's the right word. Yeah, yeah. I, I really like to spend more time reflecting and talking okay. and dealing with that. And one thing I'm quite determined to do with this business is not to be in business in a driven way. My last business, I was pretty driven. Like right. that thing of, not, not that I don't want to be determined, it's yep. not that, but there was a drivenness that didn't get the business out of my head. And this time around, new business, yeah. uh, very focused, yep. very working on it and in it, okay. but not in that driven way. So it seems like you're taking a bit more of a, a focused, strategic, and a bit of a, a mallowed approach yeah, towards the whole thing. That, that's bad I spent the time in Tasmania. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're mallowed. You're mallowed. <laughs> and my last question for you, Ian, is uh, what advice would you have for potential people going into business? Yeah, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Um, well, the obvious one is get a coach. Yeah. And but when you're ready. And, and my thought has been that if business tends to be like an exponential growth thing. And that means if you get a little bit further ahead at the beginning, it's going to make a huge difference a bit further down the line. Sure. So if you're being held back by something early on, yep. getting that dealt with early is going to make a huge difference to your business. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I go. All right, I'll give a supplementary there because look, we're, we're both coaches, obviously. Um, when you know we say that every business should have a coach, so usually when they probably need one is at the start of the business, which is usually when they can't afford to have one. Yep. So when is the right time to get one? Yeah, that's an interesting question. <laughs> Look, that's why I asked it. Yeah. <laughs> it's at the beginning, and there's different. There's also different sorts of coaching. Sure. There's the real technical business coaching, which yep. I see more where, where you're going, yep. and I do more work in the, the communication yes, and the one-on-one yes. -on -one personal space yep. of yep. what holds you back individually. Knowing enough about your business at the beginning to understand what structures to put in place, that more business coaching side, I think is really important early. Yeah. Sometimes your enthusiasm and what you're doing is going to carry you at the beginning, sure. but as soon as you start to see that being held back, there's stuff that's not working for you, yeah. you're getting frustrated with your staff, or there's conflict, or your work-life balance isn't there, yeah. that kind of stuff. That's when, really, that's when don't forget that you yeah. can then come in yep. and deal with that early yep. because you want to live life and enjoy it while you're doing it, not have it consumed by your business. Yeah, but absolutely. you want your business to succeed as well. Absolutely.
And sorry for throwing that curly one or two at, at the end there. No problem, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Look, thanks very much for taking part in this small interview project and uh, good luck with everything in your business. Thank you.